So we are back out in the desert. We have officially left the capital and are on our way south. Senegal, we are coming. <laughs> yeah. We've just entered the Djaling National Park. Let the wilderness adventure begin. Oh, oh my God. Our first wildlife. Warthogs in front. That's so, so cool. This is a safari now. It's okay. Yeah, this grading on the road is uh, really shaking our bike apart. So we hit some sand and now the bike is on the ground. <laughs> oh man. Hi, I'm Lavi and this is Oli. We are attempting a new Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by motorcycle. After riding 3,000 miles across Europe, we are now ready to explore the roads of North Africa. Click the subscribe button to follow our journey around the world and let the adventure begin! Oh man, it was really soft all of a sudden and the bike was just moving around like crazy and then there's nothing we can do. Oh, luckily there's some guys to come and help us pick it up. <laughs> okay, so it looks like Pont de Peche was not our last fall of the day. We still had one more in us, didn't we, Lavi? Oh yes. Oh my one God. One more. We were just rolling along, the piste was looking normal, the dirt road was looking fine. Suddenly, a massive load of sand on the road. I pull in the clutch to let the bike roll to a stop. I was just like waiting for it to stop because I couldn't hit the brake, it wasn't doing anything. So, I don't know, um, I don't know. Anyway, we have 10 more kilometers to reach the border. So we'll just hope for the best, hope that there's not too much more sand. Let's have a look here. No, this is okay. This is okay. Yeah, that's okay here. Straight, yeah. Bumpy, but okay. This is like a bit where we actually like the grading, hey? Yeah, exactly. G gives us a bit of grip. Yeah. So we are about one and a half miles from the border now. Yeah, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. <laughs> oh, look, there's a fella. Hello. <laughs> I've already had enough of, uh, of dirt roads again. We had a break from them and I was a bit excited to get back on. But uh, no, now I'm, I'm over it already again. I, I, I'm over it. This is, uh, you know, two falls are enough for today. And uh, I'm glad that we're getting, getting close to the border now, I tell you. Oh look, a camel! Dirt road! Hello! Oh, that's where's, cute! Where's he going? Where are you going? Oh no, oh no! Oh, nice! It looks like actually we're coming up to some sort of building. We'll turn off the cameras when we get close to the border. Just to make sure it all goes smoothly. And uh, we will catch you guys on the other side. We have just left Mauritania and we're now in the no man's land in between and uh, up ahead there is the border of Senegal so we're gonna go see what's going on on that side but it was not too bad hey no it was not too bad no not it too was not bad. too bad it was fine and so chilled compared to our way in I tell you oh my god yes so chilled I mean it was right to take this border out in the middle of nowhere because like there's just no one around and you know everybody's free and they're all kind of chilled so it's nice and look at all this water wow wow it looks really nice refreshing yeah this must be like sort of the side of the Senegal River whoa look at this wow incredible that's crazy here look at this absolutely incredible all this water coming yeah. through wow what a river hey what wow. a river incredible wow so halfway done now we've got the senegal side to do so i think we'll turn the cameras off now see how we get on welcome to senegal 
<laughs> nice. Here it is. Barrage de Diama, the border of Diama. And we have officially entered Senegal. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Welcome to Senegal. <laughs> nice. Nice. Look at this place. Really cool. Yes. We've made it through the border. It is 20 to 5 in the afternoon. We met these guys at the border already. <laughs> Way! <laughs> Way! Way. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, that was not too hard a process to get through into Senegal or even get out of Mauritania. It really wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't that bad at all, actually. I mean, when we arrived, everyone had sort of lunch. So we had to wait a little bit, but um, after they finished their lunch, we could go ahead and Oli sorted most of the things out. Yeah, the Mauritania side, you know, they just, uh, there was one building, I gave the passports and the guy, he didn't even use a computer. He just wrote, wrote it down. Uh, actually, he wanted a copy of the passport just to keep, but uh, we had run out of all of our copies. So he wrote down the information on the passport and we went through to the next place and there they stamped us out. And then they took the uh, passavant, the temporary import permit. And that was basically it. It really wasn't that hard. It took about an hour. But one thing that was strange is uh, every step of the way, the guy would at the end say, uh, that's 400 Ugia, please. Kind of in a bit of a, mm, can I get away with this? And you know what? We still had some Ugia left. That's about 10 euro though. I was like, mm, okay. I gave him 400. And then the next place when they took the paper away uh, for the temporary import permit, he was like, mm, cats on Ugia. I was like, is everybody supposed to get 10 euro from me every step of the way? <laughs> At the end, it was uh, 10 and 10 and then 250. So 20, 250. Okay, that's not too bad. We had to pay to cross the bridge actually before we got to the border post. Bridge crossing was 5,000 CFA, which I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's around 10 euro as well. And then on the other side, um, the passport process was super painless, super easy. Just gave the passports, they gave us the stamp, they asked us for a COVID pass um, and uh, my driver's license and uh, the vehicle documents. After the passports, which was free, um, we had to get the passavant, which is the temporary import permit for the bike for here in Senegal. And they only give five days at the border and it cost us about, again, 5,000 CFA, so about 10 euro. And that was really easy as well. They wanted to see the motorbike and they wanted to check the vehicle documents and my driver's license. And uh, I paid 5,000 CFA and they gave us the document and they said, if you want to extend it, you extend it in Dakar. So we have five days that we can be here until we reach Dakar before we have to extend. And some guys asked us about if we were going to get insurance for the country and we said we were going to get it in St. Louis because it's only about 30 kilometers away from the border. Uh, they seemed fine with that. They were like, oh, you get it in St. Louis. Okay, no problem. So it's a bit like Mauritania where we where we crossed the border and then we got the insurance in Nuadibu after. So I think that'll be fine. So we're heading into town now, which is about 20 kilometers, so like um, 12 miles. And then we will check out what's going on there in San Luis. <laughs> So we just stopped to pick up a local SIM card and it's amazing because it already works. 
straight away and it only costs us like two or three euro and apparently it comes with two gigabytes it's uh, orange so yeah sim card is done and we also found a place to stay for tonight in st louis in the city so we're gonna head over to that place and then that'll be us done for today i'm gonna fill up fuel hey yeah i'll fill up fuel some pot yeah what's the price the price is 890 per liter okay i will have a look how much that is wow it's like one euro 30 one euro 40. that's a pretty good price what have we got we've got 10 10 000 mil d mil d mil messy messy okay welcome to st louis We've just arrived here in town. It's about four miles to our accommodation for tonight. And I think we have to cross a couple of bridges over a river. And just look at this place. It's, it just looks incredible. Yeah, the green of the plants, the color of the buildings, the color of the dresses. Like, it just feels like there's a lot of life here. There's a, there's a, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful to see. Just look at all these trees and palms and plants. It's amazing the difference. Amazing. So we remember that we still had some pasta um, and some eggs left in our food bag. So actually, we're not going to get any food out of tonight. We're just going to go to the accommodation and get some pasta. Look how many goats there are. Oh my God, it's like a goat market. Whoa! And look at these, all these male goats with this like big bump on their nose and huge balls. Whoa! Shalom! Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of goats here. I think coming up, this is the Senegal River, hey? Wow, look at this. Oh yeah, that's a lot of water. And there's like a little beach and loads of kids swimming. Oh, magical. Look at that. Cool, look at this bridge coming up. So this is the bridge that's going to cross us over into the other part of the city. Oh wow, look at these um, birds of prey. I've never seen so many. Like, uh, I think they're kites, or, uh, well, I'm not very good, but kites, buzzards, kestrels, anybody know, let me know. But wow, that's a lot of birds of prey. Whoa, yeah. It's a busy place. Unfortunately, at this point, my GoPro ran out of battery. But after crossing the Fadeher Bridge, which was built in 1897 by the way, we found ourselves at the heart of St. Louis, the Old Town, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the best preserved examples of colonial French architecture in all of West Africa. Another bridge crossing took us over to the local part of town, where we were amazed by the beautiful chaos of the streets. Starting our day in the middle of the desert, we couldn't quite believe the abundance of colours, sounds and smells.
Countless colourful fishing boats were lined up along the river, all hand-painted in beautiful patterns. The road seemed to go on forever, but we finally found ourselves in front of our last challenge of the day. Turns out the accommodation we had booked for the night, called Eden Beach, was, true to its name, actually built on a beach. So unfortunately, with the sun setting fast, Lavi had to walk the last few hundred meters as I struggled to keep Bumblebee upright through the deep sand. A few hundred sandy wheel spins later, we finally found ourselves in front of our accommodation. All that remained was a last sandy slope to reach the entrance at the back of the building. The local kids found all of this very entertaining. Okay, now we've got to get ourselves just up this hill and round the corner and then we're there at the place. Eventually a man offered us his help and together we finally got it up and over the last sandy slope to the beachfront where we could finally give ourselves and Bumblebee a well-deserved rest. alive <laughs> exhausted absolutely we wanted to do our uh, uh, evening vlog before the sunset but uh, we ate some pasta and then we were just lying in bed and we were just so shattered from uh, this massive day today what a day from the wax shot in the morning and then a huge lot of desert in between and then arriving at the Dwaling National Park and going on this dirt road for absolutely what felt like ages and falling off in the morning and falling off in the park seeing warthogs and monkeys which is was incredible so ups and downs then the border, then coming into this crazy, crazy city here, St. Louis. And the heat was just killing me. Like, I'm very, very exhausted, but I'm very happy to be here in Senegal. It was a massive change immediately. And it's just so nice to see all these uh, life and colors and trees and birds and it's so so nice. Yeah, St. Louis seems like a really really cool place. A new chapter, a new country, country number six and yeah it's just absolutely awesome to be here. 
So that's it from us today. At the end we did about 170 miles, which is about 280 kilometers. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family. We will see you next time.